Hello, I'm Martin Goldberg. I'm the Early Medieval and Viking Curator here at National Museum Scotland and I want to show you a little bit of the exhibition of the Galloway Horde. Um, we're very fortunate to have the material from the Galloway Horde on display in the museum at the moment. It'll be on display until October 1st, so that's your chance to come and see it. Um, we're very grateful to the Crown Office for letting us put uh, the material on display while we're in this fundraising stage. And it's a great opportunity for the public to see the material for the first time and it gives us a real boost in our efforts to raise the 1.9 million that we need to, to raise by November 12th. It's also been a great opportunity for us to see it laid out um, all together for the first time. So let's go through and have a look at what there is. So there's been a lot of focus on the real flashy end of the hoard, the gold and the jewels and the unusual material. And it's really the great range of material that makes the Galloway hoard exceptional. So I've laid out the exhibition uh, according to the different parcels that are within the hoard. And if we think of that far end as the flashy end, Tonight, I'd like to focus on what is actually the bulk of the hoard, which is the silver material. So this is the top layer of the hoard, and it was 11 arm rings and ingots. Um, the arm rings are a type that are normally found in Ireland and North Wales and Lancashire, so round the Irish Sea, and this kind of completes the circle at the top of the Irish Sea. And these are the first substantial hoard surviving of these type of arm rings from Scotland. So they themselves represent a really important addition to the national collection. Those types of arm rings, you can see them, they're decorated, um, but they would have also been made from the types of ingots that they are discovered with here. Uh, the ingots are just sort of hammered out and, and decorated and, and bent to shape. But the other thing that was exciting about this first part of the discovery, the very top layer of the hoard, was this beautiful Anglo-Saxon cross. I say beautiful because I know that underneath um, the, the, the dirt that's caking it at the moment will be incredible examples of late Anglo-Saxon decoration. There'll be gold leaf and uh, a, a substance called niello that's used to, to highlight decoration on silver objects like this. And in the forearms of the cross are four animal symbols, or four symbols of evangelists, the saints that wrote the Gospels. So a real uh, sort of highlight piece of late Anglo-Saxon Christian metalwork. And this tells us that our title for the exhibition is that this is much more than just a Viking horde and the cross gives us our first hint of how much more there is in this particular horde. But the, the arm rings are important additions themselves so I'd like to tell you something that we discovered while we were organising the exhibition which gets us a little bit closer to the people that buried the hoard, um, the people that owned it at some point. So underneath the top layer, there was a layer of gravel, so that you can almost think of the top layer as a decoy. And underneath that were three more substantial parcels, much greater wealth hidden below. Um, so one of those parcels was twice as many arm rings and ingots as were in the top layer. Um, you can see some of the ingots where they've almost, they've retained that shape of when they've been poured into the mould. So some of them have this sort of drippy end to them. And that's the liquid metal solidifying um, after it's been formed in the ingot mould. So ingots are just a portable way of transferring wealth, melting older objects down and, and moving it about. And the Viking Age was famous uh, for this, this particular type of silver economy. But when we laid out the rest of the arm rings from the second batch, one of the things that was noticed immediately were these runic identifiers. So there are four arm rings that have runes on them. And these might be names or abbreviated names. Um, hopefully they will tell us more about four individuals that were involved in burying this silver. But the other thing I noticed 
was that the four runic arm rings have a different folding pattern. So one is just flattened over on the right hand side here. The one in the middle has one end folded over. The one on the left has two ends folded over. And at the back there is sort of a two thirds fold. And when you then look at the other complete arm rings in the hoard, you realize that they all correspond to one of those four folding patterns. So what I think has happened is rather than having to write their name in runes on each arm ring, they've written their name on one and then they folded it in their own particular way because ultimately they wanted to come back. They wanted to be able to recognize what was theirs and reparcel uh, the hoard out, split it up amongst the people that buried it. And this is really important for us because it gets us closer to the people who buried the hoard. And we're always asked, is this the wealth of one person or is this the wealth of many people? And I think in this case, certainly in terms of the silver, it was a group deposit. So that's, that's something that we've learned um, quite quickly. Um, and hopefully our future research program will be able to draw out a lot more of the details of, of who buried this hoard and, and its greater significance. But before we can do that, we have to complete our fundraising and we have till November 12th um, to raise the 1.9 million. I'd like to thank everybody who has donated so far and I hope that you can continue to help us so that we can all learn a little bit more about this amazing hoard.